Incoming transmission toy fans, I'm D21Beast and welcome back to my figure review series here on my YouTube channel. And today we're once again going boldly where no man has gone before. That's right, we've got another Star Trek review for you guys here today. And today we're looking at the Star Trek Enterprise Broken Bow series of figures released by Art Asylum in 2002. Before us we've got Klang, the Klingon warrior. At least that's what the box says, but if you've seen the episode you know better. Klang was actually a courier who was pivotal to the storyline of the first episode of Star Trek Enterprise, the episode actually titled Broken Bow. Now in that episode, Klang was played by actor Tommy Lister Jr. And on first impression, I'm really glad to see all the detail that Art Asylum seems to have given us with this figure. Let's go ahead and get things started by taking a look at that packaging. As you come down the front of the box, you've got the logo for Art Asylum in the upper right. You then have the series logo for Star Trek Enterprise, as well as the subtitle Broken Bow. You have a window box packaging that does sort of resemble a spaceship or maybe even a shipping container that does house the Klang figure inside as well as his accessories. And then towards the bottom you do have a label for the figure announcing who he is and all the accessories that are listed in this container. Flipping this package around, as you come down the back of the box you do have an image of the NX-01 model Enterprise in the upper right, the ship featured on this show. You have the logo for Star Trek Enterprise below that. You then have a description of the episode Broken Bow off on the left hand side as well as a lineup of all the figures available in this wave featured from that episode. Moving down you have an announcement of the next wave of figures that was going to be available as well as some other roleplay items that were available at the time. And then towards the bottom you do have a complete list of all the people involved in creating this figure. Go ahead and pause now to read that. Alright crewmen, well that's the packaging. Let's say we get Klang out of the box and see what this Klingon is all about. Alright toy fans, here we have Klang out of the box and Art Asylum has done a great job with this figure. I want to immediately start the sculpting on this guy. Let's go ahead and bring him in close. What you're going to see here is that there's some fantastic sculpting on the forehead, on the hair. As you come down the figure here, there's all sorts of texturing done on the shoulders for the different fabrics. On the arm here, it's even kind of a puffier fabric there. And then we've got the sort of chain mail coming down the arm here. Actual sculpting detail around the rings on the, the arms here. Looking on the front of the figure, we've got all this sort of belt and rope work. Again, multiple sort of uh, fabric and sculpting designs. Same thing on the other side here, flipping the figure around. So much detail coming around the back. And all of this is painted just beautifully here too. These actually look like different leathers with different shades of paint and, and color in there. As we look at his hair, you're going to see that there's lots of sculpted hairlines. Uh, there's a little bit of paint detailing in the cracks just to kind of uh, change it up a little bit. Looking at the face, you can see he's got some great painted eyes here around the brown on the eyes and the gum and the teeth have been painted. Uh, looking at his chin, you can see that he's got a beard painted here. Uh, all sorts of paint detail coming down this figure, even as we look at the legs here. Some wash on the legs, some wash on the knees, all the way down to the feet that has a silver. I mean, they did not miss a single thing on this figure. Art Asylum really went out of their way to give us an incredible representation of a Klingon figure. Tony Lister had to blush the first time he looked at this thing. Klang comes with a ton of accessories, and we've got a lot to get to here, so let's go ahead and get started with that display base. The first thing you're going to see here is this Enterprise mission patch. Now this is an image of the patch that was worn on the shoulder of the Enterprise crew members on the show, but it was also used as the sort of idea for the display base for the figures. Now this display span does not have any sort of peg sticking up out of it, but the figure is able to stand comfortably here on the display base, and you can choose to display him that way if you want to, but he's not secure on there. He can easily come off of it. I'm not a big fan of this display base. I do think it's a nice inclusion if you're into that, but for me, I'm probably just going to set this aside and not really use it. Also, we have the standard Art Asylum token. Before Diamond Select acquired Art Asylum, every one of their figures, at least the Trek figures anyway, came with these sort of tokens included, with one side featuring the old Art Asylum logo, and the other side featured whatever particular Star Trek series the token was supposed to represent. In this case, we have the Enterprise Mission patch one more time. Now, Klang also has this item, called the Klingon Ceremonial Knife. Now, if you're a Trekkie, you know that Klingon ceremonial knives typically look like the Dektag you see pictured off here to the left. Now, we did see the Dektag in the original series cast movies, the ones with Kirk, Spock, and Bones. But since this is Enterprise, I guess we're to assume that the Dektag did not exist back in the days of Captain Archer and his crew. So we have this knife here. This knife is a nice design. I do wish we would have gotten a Dektag. I would have liked to have seen Art Asylum's take on that, and I think we did end up getting one with later figures from Deep Space Nine, and possibly even later Warp figures. Unfortunately, I don't have one for comparison. But this knife does fit nicely into the left hand of Clang here. Actually, it's a little loose, but you can stick it in there and he can hold it reasonably well, and you can pose him nicely with the knife if that's what you want to do. The next accessory we see here is this Disruptor Pistol. 
Now disruptors of course were the common sidearm for Klingons and this does look sort of like a proto version of the disruptor we would eventually see again in the Kirk movies and on Next Generation in the series following. But it is sculpted very nicely with some excellent paint detail there with the silver, the black, the brown. And it fits nicely into the right hand of this Klang figure. We can just slide it in here. He does have a finger extended for this weapon. And then you can pose Klang with his disruptor drawn. Next up, we have these hands. Now these hands are interchangeable with the hands that are on the Klang figure. We have an additional right and a left hand. And it looks like actually this uh, left hand here would probably be better for holding that Klingon ceremonial knife. Let's go ahead and try to slip that in there. Ah, uh, the hand's a little tight. I don't want to force it, but it looks like you can. There we go. Looks like the knife does actually fit much better in that hand if you choose to pose the knife that way. So that's a great inclusion to have with this figure. And finally, what we've got is the Klingon Batleth, which is your standard sort of battle-ready weapon that Klingons would have in any sort of honorable or championship level combat, or just simple sparring. Now this weapon actually fits really nicely into Klang's hands. It fits in this hand over here, and then you can easily fit it into his left hand as well. Let's we'll go ahead and squeeze that in there. And this, of course, is the crowning jewel of any Klingon figure. When I reviewed my Worf, I had commented that I wish he would have come with a bat left, and it was really great to see that Klang actually came with one. In fact, I'm excited to see how this bat left measure up, measures up to the Worf figure that I've already reviewed and see if maybe I can pose my Worf with this Klingon uh, ceremonial weapon. Well, holding the bat left sort of works for Worf, but as you can see, his hands aren't really designed to hold this accessory, which is a bit too bad. Moving on to articulation, this Klang figure certainly impresses. Taking a look at the head, you can see that it does tilt down just a little bit and tilts back very nicely. Even though that hair is there, it is soft, so you can actually kind of tilt the head back. It does rotate left and right. He's got a shoulder joint that allows his arm to rotate all the way around, as well as bending out from the body up and that far. He has no rotation at the elbow or at the arm, but he does have a single joint that bends down that far and back that far. And then he does have a complete rotation here at the wrist. And then he has that same articulation here on the other side. There's no sort of waist swivel or ab crunch on this figure, but uh, he does have ball jointed hips, which is not a common thing for Art Asylum Trek figures. So I'm really happy to see that he has a full range of motion. His legs can move out that far, move forward that far, and move back that far. Uh, a little bit hindered by the costume and the sculpt of the figure, but really a great range of leg motion that we don't typically see with Art Asylum Star Trek figures. And then as we come down the leg, he does have a single joint here at the knee that bends down, uh, not really 90 degrees, bends forward that far. He does have a rotation here at the top of the boot that bends all the way around. And then he has an ankle that will bend down that far and forward that far. And there's a slight middle wiggle to it, but not really. It's basically meant to go forward and backward. So considering this is an Art Asylum Trek figure, I think it's got a great range of articulation. And I wish we would have seen that on the original series and the Next Generation figure releases as well. Height-wise, Klang is a bit of a massive figure. He does stand right about eight inches tall. For some size comparison, here he is one more time compared to the Lieutenant Worf figure, who was part of the Star Trek The Next Generation line by Art Asylum and Diamond Select. Worf's a bit of a taller figure. And here they are compared to Captain Picard, an average heighted figure from the Next Generation toy line by Art Asylum and Diamond Select. And here we can see how tall Klang is when compared to the Captain Jonathan Archer figure, who is part of this same Enterprise figure set. And compared to Ensign Travis Mayweather, an average heighted figure from the set, not much shorter than Archer. And compared to the Subcommander to Paul figure, the shortest figure in the Enterprise figure line. And finally, here we have Klang compared to the 6 inch scale Marvel Legends Infinite series Wolverine. Huh, got a thing for blades, do ya? You will be silent, Patak! Huh? Alright, toy fans, well that's my review of the Star Trek Enterprise Broken Bow series Clang figure released by Art Asylum in 2002. Overall, this is an absolutely fantastic figure. Now, Clang was only featured in one episode of Star Trek Enterprise, but the paintwork and the detail and the sculpting and the accessories Everything about this figure warrants the purchase. And the great part about this figure being such an unknown character is that he's going for relatively nothing on the secondary market. So if you're a Trekkie and you're just looking for a good Klingon figure, definitely give this guy a look. But he also looks absolutely great standing next to any of your Enterprise figures or really any of your other series of Star Trek figures that you've collected from Art Asylum or Diamond Select. He's in perfect scale with all of them. Well, that's my review, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And special thanks to my brother, Greg, who actually gave me this figure. If you like what you saw here, please feel free to rate, share, subscribe, and we'll catch you next time. Kapla! Hey toy fans, did you watch this review and find yourself wanting to know more about Klang or Klingons in general? Well, Star Trek actually streams on Netflix, Hulu, and Amazon. So take a look at this suggested episode, Broken Bow, to learn more about Klang. Or to learn more about Klingons in Star Trek lore, check out these suggested episodes below.